You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast brought to you by DraftKings, America's number one sports book app with Brad Alice. I'm merely Mike Luke. All right. We have a lot to get to today. But first of all, William, how you doing, man? It's still under the weather, but we'll, we'll power through. Um, so looking at, uh, uh, I was going to say, looking at uh, some Arizona basketball first, we're going to start with. Um, there's no way to really sugarcoat it. This was not a good performance. Uh, this was not a good week for the Wildcats right there. And they certainly showed some limitations. What were your thoughts? Yeah, you could even argue it's about 100, 100 minutes straight of mediocre basketball. And I think it kind of shows us what this year is about in college basketball. There is no dominant team. There is no you know elite, elite program. Because of that, Houston is probably going to kind of waltz into the tournament with maybe only one more loss. Their schedule's pretty weak. Um, but it should make for a fun tournament. You know, we knew Arizona was good. I still think they're very good. We knew they had some flaws. Uh, the good news, they had been able to overcome the flaws and get wins. Uh, and now it finally bit them in the butt. You know, they had to survive against Washington. They lost to Washington State. I think we're now seeing that some of your concerns about uh, athletes, especially inside, is a problem. Uh, I think we're seeing three-point shooting uh, can be a problem on both ends. Arizona being forced to shoot threes because of a zone and conversely defending the three. But I also think there's a very realistic possibility that you just, you know, coming out of the gate slow from the holidays. And that happens. That happens to loot teams. That happens to Miller teams. It happens to good teams. Um, you know, your practice, you miss a couple practices because you're away for the holidays. The practices when you come back are not as rigorous or not as crisp. Um, so this can get fixed easily. I think at the end of the day, you know, I see people in total panic mode, um, you know, indictments on Lloyd's recruiting and coaching and right. Um, suddenly we're, right, Kirk, we're still right. Number nine. So suddenly Kirk Reese is a ter terrible player. Uh, none of these guys could start for a good Lou Olson team. Um, pump the brakes. They are, you know, still one of the best 10 teams in America and probably one of the best five teams in America, but it doesn't mean they can't be beat. And it doesn't take two Hall of Fame coaches and a midnight planning session and a gimmicky defense to do it like it did the 98 Wildcats. You know, any anyone in the top 50 could probably beat them on an off night, just like Arizona can beat anyone in the country. Um, and uh, most of those teams with their B effort. Um, so, yes, there's some problems. Some problems that we kind of figured were there. Did, did I think it would come against Washington and Washington State, two pretty mediocre to bad teams? No. Um, but, you know, what, what, the one it's thing that happen, I think it'll can... probably happen, you know, hopefully, only one or two more times and hopefully to a better team. But this happens. It's happening all across the country right now, and Arizona's still better than most teams. Does this have a little bit of a Tucson skyline type feel to it where you've got some really, really good big men, but the perimeter again, and and again, the skyline had good players. I'm not saying that they didn't, but you look around the perimeter, and this is kind of uncharacteristic of a really good Arizona team in that Kerr is not bad. I mean, he has his moments. Um, Ramey is kind of meh. And you look at uh, Pella, Pella defensively is very, very good, but his impact is very Joe McClain-esque on offense. Yeah, that might be going a, a little little far on Pella, but l let's be honest. Why, why is it going too far? He's aver He can't shoot and he can't dribble. Because Joe McClain averaged like four points a game off the bench. Pella's he averaged better. now, as a senior, he averaged nine and a half, though, on a Sweet 16 team and yeah, started. But no, he, he didn't start. The, he, no, he well, I guess he started something. Oh, he, he did. And, he and Corey switched. Mm -hmm. uh, but Corey was the starter on that team. Come on, Mike. Uh, he was their sixth man. But, yeah, I mean, I think I think Pear, uh, Pella is a better version of Joe McClain. It's not a horrible comparison. Um, but he's a better player than Joe McClain was. Um, that <laughs> was said, that a cheap shot, Brad? No, Joe McClain was what Joe McClain was. Right. I mean, he, he was a guy Luke who loved six. Joe McClain. Here, here's the problem with Joe McClain. Here's Joe McClain shot sixty something percent from from behind the arc as a senior in high school, and came to Arizona as a grinder. Right. And he was not recruited to be a grinder; he was recruited to be a shooter. But you know what? That happens. Guess who else had that problem when he played in the Pac-12? Casey Schmidt, who then led the nation in three-point shooting once he went to Valpo. Um, it happens. But Joe McClain, 
great, good player. Wasn't Joe McClain started player. 20 games, Brad, as a senior. 20 games out of 33. How many of those were because they had to go small because someone was out of the lineup because of academics? I don't think he was a starter by the end of him. Either way. <laughs> right, right, for sure. Go ahead. Bell is a better player, in my opinion. Bell is an overall better player. Yes, no doubt. He may not be able to make all the impact plays at Joe because Joe was a floor burn guy. Joe was a little bit taller, was probably a better rebounder. But at the end of the day, I think Pella's more skilled. Hmm. The bigger problem is what's up with Ramey. Ramey's in slump. But um, I'm gonna let me challenge you on that. Isn't this okay. maybe just kind of who Ramey is? Um, I keep using this quote from Doug Gottlieb, but I think it's a good point where he says there are no pros in the transfer portal. And Ramey played at Texas for four years and always averaged between about eight and eleven points per game. That's kind of what he's been here. Yeah, but the last two or three games, he's been yeah. awful. Right. That's what I mean by something. No, again, I, I think Ramey should average 10. 9 to 10. Great. That's what I want. But right, but he was just bad the last two games. Just right. bad. And that's not going to happen. I'm moving forward. You know, I mean, I think at the end of the day, we already know what these guys are. And, you know, the stars are Tabellison and Ballo. Um, The wild cards, I think, in many ways are – Henderson and Ramey. Um, mm -hmm. If those guys, so when they click, they can beat anyone. When four of the starters and, you know, Henderson click, they can beat anyone. The problem is they had enough guys playing bad. You know, Kerr was off his game. Ramey was off his game. Pella was not very effective offensively. Uh, I don't remember a whole lot. Again, I didn't, I wasn't able to pay as close attention to either game because of other things going on as I normally do. Um, so I can't tell Wait a you, second. you have other things going on as well, Brad, uh, you know, I may have had a hockey triple header on Thursday and, right. um, well, we're chiefs household. So the, the, the wife gets the big TV when, uh, when the chiefs are on, but, um, the fact is, yeah, when Arizona has two or three guys off their game, especially because they're built inside out, you know, if your bigs are struggling, your guards can still take over a game. That's why everyone says guard play in March, which is true. So, you know, if you look at it, if B the combination of Blair O's and Flanagan in 94 did not score a point, Arizona could still beat you by 20 because you had D right. you know, Damon and, and Khalid. Conversely, if your guards are turning over the ball and can't get the ball inside to your big guys, um, it's, it's kind of hard for Arizona to, to win. And that's going to really? happen occasionally. All right. I want to talk a little bit about Kylan Boswell here, but first let me tell you about something here. Uh, hold on. I got actually, all right, let me just you can't make do sure a read without the paper to read Mike. I was going to say, Oh, here it is. Sorry about it. I got so many reads here. Okay. Uh, here's, let me tell you about OGs. Let's just say that you're William Brad Allison. You have a hard time sleeping. OGs comes in for you right there. And not only is it that it's flavorful, you can get Indicas, you can get Sativas, you can get them at their uh, all of your local dispensaries, 21 and up. Again, enjoy OGs. Um, it can help out a lot of people. And on top of that, it's fun. Makes you feel a little bit better when you're watching the game. Check it out. OGs, your local dispensary, and the Four Peaks. All right, we're going to get to the Four Peaks here in a second. But Umar Ballo did not play like one of the uh, Twin Towers that we had last week. And you know what? Four Peaks, though, you can always count on them being there. The official brew of PHNX Sports. Check it out at their Tempe location. Great stuff going on there. Good food, good drinks, watch parties, yell at the screen, make fun of people. Oh, or, uh, Four Peaks. And you can get the Four Peaks at the uh, downtown tap and bottle watch parties, which we're going to have this Saturday for the Oregon game. Come check it out. You can listen to me tell bad Dana Altman jokes as Arizona plays on Oregon. But again, Four Peaks. Okay. By the I way, would, have you seen the reaction of the Oregon fans? They want Altman out. I know. You know, it's it is weird though. Like the last year and a half has been really rough. Yeah, like, but, but yeah, but but again, you're not again. He's the best coach in your school's history, outside of that guy that won a title in the '40s. So exactly. You know, right. when, once they actually use nets and not peach baskets, you have correct. You have to, you, they're like, well, look, Ernie can't. Like, no, no, Ernie can't sucked. Ernie can't could win when he had NBA point guards. Right and now, let's talk about Kylan. Kylan yeah. Boswell, you and I have been fortunate enough over the years to watch 
a lot of very talented point guards come into Arizona immediately and play. Mike Bibby was really kind of the first one where you just came in and you're like, man, this dude's totally different. Um, Jason Gardner, not to that extent, but he was ready to come in and play. Boswell certainly is not in that category, but he's definitely shown some things the past couple games. Granted, he didn't play great against Washington State, but he shows a little bit of quickness. He shows a little bit of a sturdy factor and a feel for the game. There's definitely something there, and I'm curious if they start using him a little bit more. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's I think we're seeing him already using him more because of when they're using him. They're using him a little more in crunch time. I'm very curious because this is now the second time uh, a point guard has come in early. Um, with a lot of fanfare, except Boswell's being brought along slowly. Right. Whereas Nico Mannion was thrown into the fire. And part of me wonders if Nico didn't hurt himself by coming early mm-hmm. um, because he was supposed to be the guy. And he was just a guy. He was okay. Um, you know, and then he, and again, he's had a rough path. You know, going, he got drafted by the uh, Warriors, Warriors. But then when he went to Europe, he got sick. And I, I'm not sure if he's back playing or not because I know he got really, really sick. Uh, when he was in Europe, but um, I like that they brought Boswell along slowly. They didn't put this pressure on him because, frankly, he doesn't look quite ready. Now, we also have to be honest. Boswell, while a very highly rated recruit, is not a guy that was seen as a one and done. Right. So now when you're coming in an extra year early, and I think part of the reason the family did that was to maybe speed up the process. You know, if I can get you acclimated in year one uh, or, or year zero, figure it maybe you can get out in two instead of in three but it really is will be three but you'll be league age you know right right right. um but no i like what i've seen um but i i don't know what he can become i i you could tell me this is it and i'd believe you or you could tell me he's going to be a star and i'd believe you i just don't know yet because again i haven't seen enough of this you know and he's got such an unusual build. Again, that's not, you know, people, uh, Brad Alice has an unusual build for a, uh, a, a deep nine wide receiver, but he made it work. So, you know, like it can work, but he does have an unusual build though, for sure, for a point guard. And that's always, that's always sticks out to me when he goes out there. No, he definitely looks a lot more like a 1980s Big East point guard. Or the kind of guy who plays for, you know, a low, a low mid-major. You know, he right. comes out there and you're like, that guy looks 30, you know, playing for, you know, right. Southwest Louisiana. Right. Um, and then all of a sudden you look up and he's like, oh, well, you know what? He's playing like a crafty 30-year-old, you know. So I have no idea. I just don't know. Because, yeah, part of it – and there is that thing when you when the guys are thicker, uh, especially at the guard position, they look less athletic. Right. Um. But it's a, it can oftentimes be deceptive. Um, if you look at it, remember, I mean, even you know, Kyer was kind of built that way. And while he wasn't certainly an NBA athlete, he was, I think, more athletic than we give him credit for because he does. He looks like a he looks like a fullback out there. You know, he's built like Kelvin Ephon, who was more right. athletic than he looked. Right. Um, although he was certainly better suited to play for Dick Tomey than Lute Olson, but you know, he was a legit he he was had legit D1 quickness. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's a mystery what Boswell will be. I like it. Um, I think at the very worst, he's a guy who is a steady performer for you. Whether he can ever be a five-star type caliber impact, I don't know. I just, I just don't but, know. All right, let's talk a little bit about next year and what uh, – because, I think, like I said, we've seen some of the uh, issues. And I think, you know, going forward, what, what do you want out of next year? But a couple things. Tap and bottle. The official watch party is back this Saturday. William, will you be there? Uh, maybe. All Is right. For a That's... non-definitive answer. All right. Kobe Thiel said he's going to be there. We're going to have some other people there. Come to Tap and Bottle. Yell at the screen. It's a lot of fun. Um, and you might even be graced by William Brad Alice there. That's called a tease right there. But again, Tap and Bottle, the official watch parties. Come check it out this uh, Saturday at 3. And um, Illegal Peeps. Now, talk about high energy. I was making fun of this Tom Hanks movie the other day that looks absolutely terrible that they keep showing on TV that looks very low energy. High peak or high peaks, uh, illegal peaks, high peaks, illegal peaks. There's an OG is, joke in there somewhere. Right, right. There is. Illegal peaks is high energy at its finest, where you go there, great, uh, great drinks, great food. You can go to the Tempe location. You can go to the University of Arizona location. You will never be disappointed. Check it out for peaks. Again, enjoy our uh, illegal four peaks, illegal peaks. Check it out. 
The, uh, again, great stuff. Sorry, I just butchered that. Sorry, Illegal Pete's. But I do love you. I've been to Illegal Pete's. I've spent th- hundreds of dollars at Illegal Pete's. So trust me, if it's good enough for me to waste my non-income, it's good enough for anybody. Check it out, Illegal Pete's. By the way, Bravo. that Tom Hanks movie looks like it uh, should have been a Clint Eastwood movie. It looks terrible. Like 3% less uh, right-wing references. It doesn't look good at all, for no, sure. I'm- um what do we next year for Arizona? Though? You want to be more athletic. You want to be more dynamic, of course. Um, you got Jamari Phillips coming in, but he's twenty twenty four. You're probably going to get Carter Bryant in that class. So those guys are still two years out. Uh, next year you got KJ Lewis coming in. I'm a big fan of KJ Lewis. He's lived here in Tucson, by the way. Um, but you know, I don't know how ready he's going to be able to contribute immediately, especially from a, a, you know, a guard creation perspective. That's kind of what worries me a little bit is that I don't know exactly who's coming in next year. That's going to be able to kind of fix some of these issues. It's not who's coming in. It's who's going out. All right. We're writing off a two loss basketball team that's ranked ninth in the nation who could have everyone back. Are they preseason number one next year? If they return the peaks? No, you know why? Because they're going to fall in love with whoever has it's going to be Duke or Kentucky because they're going to bring in the number one recruiting class, even though Calipari might be at Texas by then. But um, if you were smart and if Arizona brings everyone back of, of note and adds KJ and, and, and maybe one more piece or maybe, you know, to replace Ramey, um, they should be mm-hmm. because as although they still lack some certain things, what you're basically going to have is you're basically going to have the most experienced team, the tallest team. Um, now, that, there's still some big questions because half these guys can go collect a paycheck in Europe tomorrow. Right. They could all leave tomorrow and go get paid. But what's um, fun about them, though, Brad, is that I don't know that Tabell or uh, Tabell, I don't know that uh, Ballo is an NBA player. Because I, 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 there's a lot of Kofi Coburn to him right there. But that's a good thing for Arizona fans. He might be able to make more money off an NIL coming back. He could to me, to me with Ballo. Ballo looks like a guy a good team takes in the second round to figure out what he can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you want to leave Arizona go be the sixtieth pick, right? And go sit on San Antonio's bench while what's his face tinkers with you? Um, right. I, you know, I, I wondered why Kofi Coburn left. He, you know, again, I get it. There's, I don't know what his situation. You know, even even a deal in Europe is life changing money for some of these families. Um, but you know, so is being national player of the year. So right. is being a l- absolute legend uh, in a basketball crazy town. I mean, n- no offense, but you know, Umar Ballo never plays. Comes one more year, they make a couple deep runs. He's got a job somewhere in Tucson for the rest of his life. Right, I mean, for sure. You know. Maybe making seventy five thousand, but guess what? You can look pretty well for seventy five thousand. So there's a no, it's not half a million dollars playing in Belgium. But the fact is, yeah. So I don't know. You can tell me everyone leaves, and you can tell me everyone comes back. I think one of the things I like about Tommy Lloyd is I think it is a much more fun atmosphere than under Miller, mm-hmm. because frankly, a, a lot of guys left Arizona to be second round draft picks, right? Brandon Ashley. Now I get why he left because of the foot, but Nick Johnson, right? I shouldn't have left. Uh, that's the guy. Grant who comes Jarrett. Back. Well, Grant Jarrett was had his foot out the door the minute he got on campus. But there's a lot of guys like that uh, in the Miller era because I think probably just wasn't quite as fun as mm-hmm. it maybe is under See, Lloyd. I'm a maybe little it surprised by that, to be honest with you, that Lloyd hasn't. And again, I, it's going to be fine. I think by 2024 on that the recruiting is going to be fine. But I'm surprised that Lloyd hasn't been more of a hit domestically, mainly because he's the style is fun. He's not telling you that he's going to run. He's showing you that he's going to run. That to me is that, that to me is a little bit interesting. Like with Miller, we always heard, well, we're going to open it up. We're going to run, and it never really happened. With Lloyd, he's doing it, and they're winning at a high rate, and he's not recruiting at that level. It's weird. Um, it might be how they go about recruiting, too. I don't know if they're – Miller hmm. pushed, really pushed for those early commitments, and then sometimes it worked out and sometimes it didn't. Right. Uh, Miller pushed to get kids on campus – um, with uh, unofficial visits over those summers, um, book pushed for kids right. to get on campus right. uh, for unofficial visits. Um, I'm not sure Arizona does that because part of it is because they've got kids stashed in Europe, probably. 
Right. Um, I'm assuming there's two or three guys they have targeted right now. Um, you know, if 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 they fall through, or you know, so um, yes, I'd like to see him get a sp- splash recruit. But I think the other thing is, I think because they don't want a, they don't want to play Lavin Miller five star collect your baseball card. Right. Um, bringing in Kobe to- Simmons just to say you have a five star guy and then put him out there, right? Just to land a five, yeah, you know. So I think he'd much rather bring in some guys that don't look great right away, and, and build. Even look at Gonzaga. Gonzaga is now cranking out every once in a while some one and done guys. Who were the best two players the last couple of years? True, five Timmy. year guy Timmy and uh, who's the kid who just left like uh, Kispert or whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, they had the one point guard who was the five star kid who left after one year, but the bulk of that team is three and four year but guys. It, you got the Nemhards that are flanking him right there. Yeah. yeah exactly. So that's what he wants to do. So yes, you know Boswell to him is probably a three year guy. And maybe Let me ask you this: Traveling Gabriel, interesting point here. Says the lack of athleticism is worrying. As PGU, we should be better. I'm just going to ask you this right now: Can you win a national championship with Kerr Crease as your point guard playing 30 minutes a game? Yes, if you combine it with the other guys they have around them. Yeah, right. Now, ask me. I, I'll give you this one: Take away McConnell. Which of Miller's point guards would you rather have than Kerr Crease right now? Mark Lyons. Okay. That's probably it though, right? Does Nick Wise count? Sure. You'd rather have Nick Wise than Kirk Creese? I wouldn't. No. I would. No. Nick Wise was like 15 and 6, man. How many games did he win as a starter? Uh how they went to how, the, how, They went to the Sweet 16 with Budinger and Hill. No, you just Come asked on. me. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'd rather have Kirk Creese uh, Especially with the guys they got around them. So All right, fair enough. Fair Arizona enough. hasn't honest, Arizona hasn't been PGU since Jason Gardner. Uh yeah. Jason yeah. Gardner for sure. Yeah. I mean Because that's when they had the assembly line. That's when it was Damon. That's when it or Damon to Bibby to I'm uh, sorry, Reggie, you're in there as well. Damon to Reggie to Mike Bibby to Jason Terry to Jason Gardner. It was just an assembly line. Gardner was really the last. Really the last one right there. I mean, obviously, they were good enough with uh, Shakur to to go to a Final Four with that team, but they needed Salim next to him. They yes. needed uh, some other guys on the floor. I mean, he wasn't – yeah, and that and he is a big reason they didn't go to the Final Four in that, in that game in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so it's been a while since Ar- – Arizona's wing forward to you now and has right. been really the whole time. I like that. I like that a lot, Brad. You put that out there. Now, a couple things. I want to tell you about Octane Raceway. All right. This is based out of Scottsdale. Check this out. They partnered with PHNX. If you got kids out there, young kids, or heck, even if you're a kid at heart, this is the place to go. You've got, uh, you can, you got racing, you've got, uh, you've got, um, you got pool, you got games, you got, Good drink specials, you name it, they've got it. Check it out at the Octane Mavericks Raceway. Great stuff up in Scottsdale. Happy to have them on here. And this is a great place, again, to take the kids. Or if you're a kid at heart, check it out as well. And Mountain Mike's Pizza. Here's the deal. Mountain Mike's Pizza, very good pizza. Brad Alice has had it. The great John Schuster has had it. Not only that, they've come on the show with cups showing Mountain Mike's Pizza as well. It's a fun place. It's big. It's a great place to watch games. And, oh, yeah, by the way, the pizza is very good. They got the thick, curly pepperonis. I endorse it. William Brad Ellis, do you endorse it as well? I do. We All right, there you go. TV setup, which is re- kind of getting rare in this town. It is. Check it out, Mountain Mike's Pizza, and the show notes and the link in the description. All right. Now, uh, moving over to some Arizona football. Sometimes, to me, there is addition by subtraction. and uh, Jerry Roberts family is making a big thing on Twitter right now about, you know, uh, why he's leaving and whatnot. Here's my take on the whole Jerry Roberts thing at linebacker spot. It's a numbers game. It just, it just is. And when Justin flow committed to the U of a, I can tell you for a fact, the coaches don't plan on taking him out of the lineup. Jacob Manu is not coming out of that lineup. And when you get, well, if you get Leviticus Sua, He's going to be playing a lot too. Roberts was probably going to be that fourth linebacker there. And, you know, kind of a numbers game right there. 
you know, to yeah, and again, I like Jerry Roberts. I thought he did a nice job. He's he's limited. Um, yeah. He can rack up tackles. He's good against the run, not great against the pass. Um, he he doesn't look like it in the modern game. Much like some of Arizona's bigs don't are, are very good college players. Linebacker is being downgraded in the NFL as a position right, of, of right now. It's a, it's a bad time to be a tailback and, and a linebacker in, in, in football, to be honest. Right. Um. So I'm not sure Roberts fits the modern game anyways, the modern NFL game, and probably wouldn't get showcased in a way at Arizona that would help his draft stock if he even has enough draft stock. Again, it would be nice for him to have gone. You know, it was nice that he was coming back. And again, my guess is this means Arizona either feels really good about Sua or feels really good about another transfer. Mm -hmm. And they were probably pretty honest with Roberts because, again, while he is leaving, I haven't seen vitriol. Maybe I've missed something. My yeah, guess his, his father's been very animated about Arizona. Yeah, but, you know, but his dad also calls him Baby Ray Lewis. He's not Baby Ray Lewis. Right, right. True. Um, That's true. He, again, he's a good player. Um, he'll probably go to a UMass, and when they play their regular schedule, he'll probably put up 10 tackles a game. But when they play ACC teams, um, he, he kind of comes back to earth a little bit. Again, you know what? we That happens. That even happens with top five ranked teams, as we saw last night. Um, there was just a def, different level of athleticism. So, again, it's a shame it went down that way. Um, but I've, you know, I, as good nice as a story as it's been arizona's looking to win games man this is a division they, they don't owe a feel-good story of not bringing in a five-star linebacker or two or a four-star linebacker or you know right. getting outplayed by a kid who is just a little more athletic jacob mono is more athletic so i'm curious to see brad the middle of the defense next year because um I think that some of these guys are a little bit addition by subtraction. I don't love losing Jackson Turner, but Christian Young, I know, great kid, tried hard. But, man, Christian Young was tough to watch last year, the last couple years. And with uh, uh, Jerry Roberts limited as well, you put in Justin Flo, you're going to see Isaiah Taylor take over one of those safety positions, Jason Taylor's kid. And I can tell you for a fact that the coaching staff is very, very bullish on him. And then you look he in the played middle. Played really well against ASU. He really did. And then you look at that uh, the linemen. They love Kungaika and Uiaga Lele. You know, I know a lot of people are bummed about Paris Shand, but and Keon Bars. But those guys, Uiaga Lele and uh, uh, Kungaika, were already stealing snaps from them as true freshmen at the end. I mean, I think the coaching staff feels more than okay with those two guys. If you had to have two guys right there, so I think a little bit of this is addition by subtraction. I think the big blow is losing bars, but not losing bars as a starter. It's losing bars as a rotational player. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want to be a rotational player. I get it. You know, Shand was going to be rotational. I think Turner was going to be rotational if, if right. things went well. Um, CRW is a loss for sure. He is, but I'm not sure he's fighting for that job, isn't he? Was he that good? I would. Uh, yeah. I mean... He's yeah, he's, he's good. He's no, he's solid, but he's you, you, you got to upgrade all those guys to get to no the doubt. Next and level. you've got Price Sock, you got Davis. These are new that new lane, new wave corners. They're six foot three. You're bringing in the kid out of California as well, who's six foot three. They clearly wanted to get bigger and more dynamic at those positions. So, again, in a perfect world, that would be your uh, upperclassman depth, right? Um, and I don't. And maybe I'm just wrong, or maybe Arizona's coaching is is bad. But do I really think those three guys are going to go? Other than um, Singer, are those right. two guys going to go and 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 start for USC? No, probably not. No, I give CRW a chance. I don't give Bars any chance, really. Although yeah. I got, in all fairness to Bars, I got to give him this. I think Under Bars is, is has a better chance, to be honest. Under Brown, Under Brown, Bars was really really good. Yeah, I mean he had what five or six sacks in. Uh, you know, I mean, he was really good for a while there. So I got to give him that. Paris yeah, Shand, I, Paris Shand, well, is just kind of filler, rotation, yeah, rotation, yeah. backup. Is, is he going to play? Right. Yeah. I, oh, I don't see him at LSU. I don't see him playing. Now, at all conversely, all, I think all these guys who are going to UMass are going to play and play a lot, but they're mm -hmm. playing at UMass. There's a reason. Um, so, yeah, to me, what, what, 
again, we're taking Singer out of the equation. What you're losing is you're losing quality depth and you're losing potentially leadership. But, you know, there's still some rumblings that there's still a few guys out there that aren't great upperclassmen leaders. I don't know if any of these guys are. I don't want to disparage any of them. But if you're going to be a seven-win Arizona team, Keon Bars and Jackson Turner and Christian, you know, CRW, they're, they're not right. your stars. They're, they're not. complementary pieces. Right. And my guess is if Arizona is going bowling, it's because that cornerback duo of Takario Davis and, uh, you know, uh, Price uh, are, are, are studs. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're rotating in Stukes and uh, Celestine. Right. Um, and it's just because I'm hoping Celestine's good just because I love his name too. And his it's a name. great name, dude. But it's he's a- also, he's also like 5'8. Uh, right. But he's a burner. Um, you know, it's going to be because he's young guys. And frankly, this, you know, poly movement up front, which is what Arizona should be doing. By the way, we have an open defensive back position right here. Isn't Dwayne Aquina the most, the most no brain hire ever? That, yeah. Although I like the other guy that's been rumbling out there. The, uh, the word. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, was he, Cause he has DC experience as well. But if Aquina has the motivation, cause what yeah. people don't remember the last time Aquina was here, he and pretty much, Oh, who was the other assistant who was new to that staff saved Arizona's recruiting class. Mm-hmm. Cause by then several of the guys had checked out, including right. a little bit with stoops and they saved that recruiting class by, so that was also a decade ago. So th- does Dwayne Aquina have that fire? Uh, and if he does, you absolutely bring him in because one, he can coach mm-hmm. two. He can recruit again. If he has the fire, Three, he's got the ties to both U of A and that Polynesian community that Arizona has done a really, really good job recruiting. And what I, what I also like about him, too, is that, yeah, I mean, again, I'm not casting any aspersions here, but I don't know if Johnny Nansen can coach. I, you know, uh, uh, Jed Fish certainly uh, thinks he can, and that's enough for me. But there's a, there's a, some of these guys back there that I don't know what kind of coaches they are. I know what kind of coach uh, uh, Dwayne Aquina is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean – did he, uh, with the exception of Kaysen, didn't he teach, uh, coach all the award winners? Yeah, he coached uh, C Mac, he coached Daryl Lewis, uh, Tony Bowie. I mean, you name them. Yeah. So Brandon, Brandon, Chuck Cecil, you name them. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, if, if Aquino wants it, again, has to have the fire. And again, I don't know how old he is. He's, he, he's got to be in his 60s now. Um, and if he has the fire, yes, bring him in yesterday. Um, but again, I don't want a guy who, who, you know, might need a break. Right. He's been gr- I mean, that guy's been grinding for a long time and has done it well, whether it was Arizona, Texas, Hawaii, you name it. That guy's been coaching his butt off for a long time. He's Brad Alice. I'm Mike Luke. Brad, where can they find you? And by the way, Traveling Gabriel, great questions, great comments. Abraham Mendoza, as always. Sean Seeley, you're always uh, always appreciated. Sean, you should be up there Saturday at 3. Love to see you up there. Um. But uh, Brad, where can they find you? Are you going to get any podcasts? Because I know you're not feeling well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to see if I can keep my voice here. But yeah, WSR Brad on Twitter. Find me there. I tweet mostly about the U of A, occasionally about music and whatever games on TV. You, is, is Thursday or is Thursday's game going to be too late for you? Uh, I I don't know what time my hockey game is. My league has sent me. I got playoffs on Thursday, so. All right. Well, we'll keep you in the loop. But Saturday, you'll be on post game, right? Your your absence was noted by multiple people on the post game. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, like I said, um, just a lot going on. But yeah, mostly you're being good. sick. We'll but, take- uh, I I'll try to come on and hey, Mike, you got to look down at the text. I asked you if you still needed me, and you and you didn't. And you I was didn't during that was during the middle of the show. I didn't even see. I see I you there. answer text during the middle of the show. Come never, on, never, never. But I will try. Yeah, if uh, a lot just depends. Looks like my uh, volleyball coaching debut for the season has moved back a week, so we may be able to sneak down and and grab a beer with the people and then do the show after that. Uh, but we will. Play I speak it for the beer. citizenry when I say more William Brad Alice is better than less William Brad Alice. So you know that there, William. Okay. Well, we we, we will do our best for all three uh, <laughs> versions right. of PHNX. He's, yes, he's Brad Alice. I'm Mike Luke. As always, thank you all. Uh, fantastic. Appreciate you guys. We'll be back with you tomorrow. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. Oh, 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 o